Let's get the series underway. It's Lethemir versus the car. Um, I just need to very quickly make a little low production quality scoreboard. If you do, you guys remember this? It's been a while since we did uh, any of these. <laughs> been a while since we had any of the little scores down here. Um, but that's what you know. That's what it used to look like. Let's uh, let's put the volume up a little bit. And yeah. Excuse me while I uh, shout out a bunch of YouTube subs. Um, I've got to I've got to see who they are. Hold on. I'm trying to refresh this this page. Because a lot of YouTube viewers were joining the channel during the downtime. Are you serious? I, I, I don't think it's working right now. I might have to do it later because I've tried to do it. I've tried to load the page. And, uh, and now it's not loading. That's a little bit embarrassing. Yeah, this is the downside of doing things live. Things go wrong and people know about it. Because <laughs> you can't do it again. But if you if you do it pre-recorded like you did for the Manfield Light 5K, it's great. Nobody knows about any of the mistakes and any of the things that have gone wrong. Yeah, it looks like I'll have to do that another time. Never mind. But all of you guys who did join the channel on YouTube during the Manfield Light 5K and you're waiting for me to say thank you to you at the start of a video, uh, I'm going to do it. I, I am going to do it. As soon as my channel actually lets me uh, look at them. Lethemir looks like he hasn't forgotten at all how to play ones, by the way. He's just crushing right now. Making this very difficult for the car. Generally in that position, you want to be, you want to be defending from the ground, by the way. Uh, that position that the car was in. Yeah, just to reiterate before we get right into the series, deep into the series. Um, yes, anyone who has joined my YouTube channel, click that join button, become a channel member, and I've not said thank you, then uh, just be patient. It'll be in one of the next few videos, I promise. As soon as I can actually load the page, it won't load right now. I don't know who my channel members are. All right, Lethemir, 3 0. Easy as you like. The car might be the rank one North American player at the moment in the leaderboard. But he's up against one of the best players to ever play ones from America. This is not going to be easy for him. Fake kickoff for Lethemir. Doesn't get the boost though. He's gone a little bit too far out into the midfield. Didn't turn quick enough. But you know, the biggest point of, uh, of this game, or the biggest you know, thing to watch out for, for me in this game, is to really take a look at how well the car is going to be able to defend against Lethemir. Because I think that is the key for him, is if he can defend well, then he's got a good chance because Lethemir's defense, as we all know, is pretty legendary. And the car is not going to get many goals. So it's crucial that he doesn't let Lethemir score, like, you know, seven, eight, nine goals in a game. Because I don't think that the car is going to get that many goals against Leth. We'll see, though. We're only in game one. Uh, we'll have to take a look how this develops. I can tell you um, that Lethemir has been playing some private ones. He's not, I think he's top 100 in the 1v1 leaderboard. Good save there by Leth. Decides not to wave dash. Um, yeah, although don't be fooled by the fact that Lethemir is, you know, maybe, I, I think he's barely inside the, the top 100 for 1v1. Barely. Uh, but don't be fooled by that. He's still an incredible ones player. And as we all know, an incredible show match player. If you uh, have just recently started watching my channel, watching my 1v1 content, and you might not be aware that uh, Lethemir won both of the 1v1 tournaments that I ran on my channel for North American players in the past. He won both of them. Uh, he was able to beat Dapper in the final of the first one. And I think in the second one he beat, uh, was it, was it Killer Eakin in the final or something like that? I know it was uh, it was someone like Killer Eakin back in the day that Lethemir was able to beat. But he, he was just crushing in that tournament. So as a tournament player, as a show match player, very few people have as good a record as Lethemir does, on my stream at least. He's an absolute monster. The car is going to have his work cut out for him today. Lethemir decided not to go for that wall shot. He had an option. I reckon if he was behind in this game, he might have gone off for the wall for that. But two goal lead. Don't want to be taking those risks. If he does mess up the shot, the car is going to get a freebie at the other end. Really nice defense there by Leth. Staying low. Doesn't want to give the car any free shots underneath. This is one of the advantages uh, for Lethemir's kind of unique camera settings that he has. Car, bit too early up in the air for that one, and Lethemir, despite the fact that he's low on boost, is going to boom in a long shot, make it 4-1. The car got a little bit ahead of himself there. It's arriving too early. He was running out of boost, so it was an awkward one. Leth and Dapper played a lot of private ones games two days ago. Didn't really watch too many, but uh, you know how they did. Who was, who was winning more out of Leth Lethemir and Dapper? I heard that they were both playing private ones. Uh, to try and get their level back up again. This car picks up a kickoff goal. It's definitely far from over. 
Any thoughts on the fashion? I've always been a fan of traffic cones myself. I think that they're great in and out of the game. So only compliments as far as the car is traffic cone. Look at this by left the mirror. He's again able to spot the car moving out of position and flips it over him with a backflip shot. That's very cheeky. You'll notice that the car is trying to stay behind the ball there. He's trying to block Lethemir's vision ever so slightly. And against 99% of players, that would work quite well because if they're that close to the ball and they have standard camera settings, they're not going to be able to see what you're doing, whether you've actually challenged or whether you're fake challenging. But Lethemir plays with this camera, and he always has. He's the only player that I know who's really, like, really good at the game with these settings. Um, and it's because he's able to use that additional vision to his advantage and uh, I think that the you know, advantages that he gets from having improved vision are more than enough to make it worthwhile and unlike a lot of other players who played with very very stiff and kind of high up cameras in the past he doesn't seem to lack precision at all he's very precise with his hits very accurate player and he doesn't uh, you know have to readjust his flight path very much in the aerial game either. The car makes it a three goal game with a goal after another kickoff. Strong kickoff plays when he does get the ball under control from the car. Johnny, you're the reason so much Rocket League. Thanks for hosting such amazing streams. Well, thank you for the kind words. It's people like you that keep me doing this. Uh, and it is still a real passion of mine to bring you this content. I'm re I've always enjoyed watching 1v1 content more than any other Rocket League game mode. Although I love watching uh, RLCS 3v3. And I love watching other big Rocket League tournaments as well. 1v1 has always been uh, my favorite to watch. Full volley Lethemir saved by the car. I think that's probably going to be enough to win the game though for Leth. The fact that, simply the fact that he hasn't conceded possession there should give him the win. And that's a really powerful wall shot. It's going to go in from distance to make it four. Game one is going to be going to Lethemir here. A strong statement here against the currently number one player in North America. Number three worldwide in ranked 1v1. This is, of course, the show match settings. Not the same by any means. Oh, that's a nice shot by Leth. I think he's just on gold that one. We have to take another look at this. <laughs> I reckon uh, that Leth just uh, put that in his own net. Let's take another look. Yep, <laughs> he just scooped it in. Very, very well played. F1. We'll clip that, Glad. <laughs> Good the good the Lethemir's listening as well. I did very much appreciate that one goal. We're going into game two, the car has to try and tighten up his defense. He's not uh, looked ready for Lethemir's long shots. He's not looked ready for Lethemir's corner plays. He's pretty much just not. He's, he's not been prepared for what Lethemir's bringing to the table. That is uh, something that he has to fix in this next game. I don't think this is going to be winnable because he's. Uh, yeah, he's, he's not against a player that's easy to reverse sweep now, is he? I'm not sure if anybody's ever reverse swept Lethemir. But, uh, yeah, the car probably doesn't want to go down that route. I think this is the game that he needs to win if he wants to really make this into a series. Let's see if he can do it. It's all about defense. You know, I've called the car in the past one of the players that kind of make... He reminds me a bit of Lethemir. And another player that I would uh, say kind of reminds me of Lethemir in some of the ways that he plays is King Rani because they're not afraid at all of 50-50s. They love pressuring the ball. Just love making it as awkward as possible for their opponent. That's a good boost grab by uh, the car. He decides not to go for a demo play. You'll see there, Lethemir got exactly what he wanted. All he needed there was the ball to go away just for the time being so that he could get 100 boost and then posture for another challenge. And here he's doing just that. He bumps the car blind. I'm not sure if that was... An Intended or, or not, but it worked out quite well. Car in a bit of an awkward spot here. He scored himself in his own net. And then Lethemir gets a chance to boost starve him. Do I read my emails? Sometimes. I've got like uh, 130 unread emails at the moment, but that's probably because I've been away um, for the last two weeks. I've been out of the country on holiday for Christmas and New Year. I know that I'm back. I'm trying to catch up on everything, but I've got to prioritize. You know, I've got to try and uh, prioritize certain things before others. Number one is try and get some more content for YouTube before I go away this Thursday. This is currently Tuesday by the time I'm streaming this for anybody who's watching on VOD. Um, going away on Thursday to spend a couple of days with my parents 
in the north of Scotland. Because when I was out of the country for Christmas, New Year, I didn't see them at all. So I think it would be a good idea to, to go and see them for a couple of days. That's where I'll be for the, rest, for the latter half of this week. Um, then after that, yeah, hopefully we're going to get back on the grind for replay reviews and Twitch streams. And start planning the next event. That's the, the big one. I really want to get planning. You can have all the production that you want in the MN5K. It all means nothing when the players swap orange blue team every uh, game. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm going to talk about this very briefly because I do, I do see a lot of comments about that on YouTube and on the Reddit. Don't think I've seen any on Twitter, um, but yeah, Twitch as well. A lot of people were commenting on the fact that in the Manfield Night 5K, players change teams a lot. One guy would start orange team, then he'd be blue the next game. I'm personally like not bothered by that. I've never told players to stick to the same team on my stream. In fact, I kind of like watching their little battle to steal the, the car that they want, the, the, the team that they want. Sometimes uh, you'll have a player who's really trying to join quickly on red, on orange team rather, because they like their, their, their orange car, they feel like they're playing well in that, and the other guy might try and steal it from them. So I don't really mind when players are changing teams. I think in a 2v2, or in a 1v1 rather, it's pretty easy to, to keep track. And um, yeah, I'm not sure if in the future I'm even going to force enforce team colors. I, I might, but uh, it's definitely not something I I personally really care about that much. But if you guys do, then I'll, then I'll absolutely try to to do that. Well, that's a really nice mind game by the car. He's tied the game in fantastic fashion. I want to see this one again from Leth's perspective. Uh, the car really sold that with the, the air roll away from the ball. He made Leth think that he was going to flick that into the top shelf. Uh, yeah, the name is always in the bottom left corner when we're when we're watching and it's just two players. So yeah, I, I don't know what you guys think about that, but I mean, personally, it's never been something that I've had difficulty with keeping track of who's who um, and I don't really mind it, but yeah, if the, if the majority of you want me to try and get players in the same team every game, then sure, by all means, I'm not going to be against that. Right, let's go the car in a really awkward spot here. Car might be in trouble, and yes, he is. He doesn't know really how to challenge from this position. It is really difficult to challenge when you're when the opponent switches sides of the field like that. I was commenting um, in the grand final of the Manfield Night 5K actually on how well both Scrub and Fairy were doing that. For me, it's one of the things that really separates the best players in 1v1 historically from the guys who are you know trying to get up to that level. It's their ability to break down someone who's full you know 100 boost in defense uh, and in a comfortable shadowing position, trying to move the ball around the field into positions that are difficult to challenge and difficult to save shots from. That's the key and that's what's something that Lethemir is really good at. Doesn't look like much but try and copy these pathing uh, movements in your own games and you'll have great success. That's again really nice defense by Leth. Blocking the low 50-50. He doesn't have much boost. It's nice to go for the side flip flick. I reckon that's a goal for the car. Indeed it is. Leth's going to have to do better than that if he wants to put more goals past the car. You have to get used to this haircut. I did tell the hairdresser to take a bit more off the top today. I, I, I decided it's time to you know, just lose a little bit of the length. Hopefully that wasn't the source of whatever power um, I've had up until this point or else I'm in a lot of trouble. It certainly looks like, oh dear. Oh no, oh the car. Oh, he can't do anything. He just has to watch it go in. <laughs> he couldn't do anything but own goal this. Lethemir's missed his shot. But it doesn't matter because all the car could do is watch it go in. You know, it was technically savable, but that's far from easy. He would have had to get on the goal line and then just dodge and hope, really. What a play <laughs> by Leth. I don't know if that was just bad manner. He's forced the own goal out of the car. You can see the car panicking. He's like, how do I save this? Nice flick by Leth as well. 6-3. The car looks lost. He doesn't know how to deal with Lethemir's play style. This vision that Lethemir always has, thanks to this camera of his, really paying dividends. And the car doesn't spot the fake kickoff as well. This is probably the end of game two. As Lethemir is just going to run down the clock a little bit here. And no doubt put another shot on net that's going to be tough to stop. Once again, the car just doesn't know how to get close to Lethemir without Lethemir knowing about it. He doesn't know what to do, really. How, how does he get in front of Lethemir to put a challenge in without Lethemir seeing him do it? And, you know, I don't think there is an easy way. I think he's going to have to adapt and shadow a bit more. Of course, the problem then is 
Lethemir is not exactly the easiest player to save goals against with shadow defense. Leth, Leth has forced the car into an early ceiling shot there because he was up quick as you like to challenge. And this will actually be a goal for the car by the looks of things. He's got one back. And not by wasting too much time. It was really well done here, actually. Looked like Leth might have got the challenge in, but just in the nick of time, the car got the flick over his head. Hey, how you doing, Target? It's good to have you back as well. It's great to be uh, live streaming. I missed it. I really did miss it. That was one of the actually difficult, most difficult parts. Most difficult part. Yeah. One of the parts that was most difficult about the Madden Life 5K is I couldn't stream anywhere near as much as I wanted to, which is something I really did not enjoy. Nice shot by the car. Lethemir looking for the in and out save, but misses just by a fraction. He wasn't too far off there, was Lethemir. A double jump might have saved that, in fact, if he double jumped and gone down into the ball. Um, but two goal difference. He's suddenly looking. You know, it's possible for the guard to close this, and he's ball chased to get a chance. He needs to double jump quickly, though. Lethemir just gets a touch on it. That's going to give him game two and a 2 0 lead in the series. Lethemir looking as good as ever. Is he going to get another sweep today? And just remind everybody... Oh, sorry, I've gone a bit ahead of myself there. Made it to 3-0. Uh, it's looking to remind everybody just how good he is at 1v1. Thanks for all the subs that I've missed during this uh, show match, by the way, guys. I'm going to thank you all after this is over. Might be over after one more game. Lethemir keeps up this stellar form. How does casting show matches compare to casting tournament games? There is a few, quite a few differences, actually. So, number one... Since I prefer to cast tournament games without face cam, it's done by the car here, by the way. It's a very nice touch, very sly. Um, I like, you know, casting tournaments with a more clean UI. Just, that's just my preference. I know some people would rather the face cam, but I've decided to. I've decided not to use it. Um, but yeah, the, that's one of the big differences. I know you guys can see me, so I can use, you know. Uh, you know, facial expression or you know, body language to react to something if I don't really want to react to it by saying something. Um, I can answer questions from Twitch chat like I'm doing right now. That's one of the big differences. If I'm feeling very, very naughty, I could turn on... Oh dear. I could turn on uh, the alerts and then talk to Brian a little bit. There's you know, a more interactive casting experience if I'm live on Twitch. Whereas if I'm casting tournaments, it's just me and the game. So it's a lot more... Um, focus. It's a lot more intense, I would say. A lot harder as well. I mean, you guys can see me if I'm like to stop in to take a drink of water. That's nobody's gonna question that. Nobody's gonna be like, "Why did Johnny stop talking for three seconds at this timestamp?" And you know, and, and then everybody will be debating about what was happening. You can you can just see me. You know, can see me taking a, drink, a sip of water. So it's a, it's a much more relaxed casting experience when you're live streaming on Twitch. Or at least for it is for me. Um, a lot more interactive. Those are the two main things. Another great shot by Leth into his own net. Look at this redirect. After the car got him off his goal line with a long shot. Great power by the car there. Leth deciding to dodge into that one. Maybe a double jump would have saved it. It's hard to say. Hindsight is 2020. Yeah, what do you guys think about the, the differences between casting from live streaming and... Um, tournaments like what are the main differences you guys notice from uh, from my casting I didn't see too many people complaining about my casting which is great because I think I could do better I think uh, especially my vocals oh my goodness my voice was just dead with the cold so I was dying most of the time um, yeah I could do a much better job just telling a story as well I think that's something I didn't do so well I'm not seeing anybody making comments so I guess yeah nothing I guess nothing's different I'll take it I like them really looking to tie things up the car is there Still up by one in game three. Uh, you can't see a screen because the nose. Thank you for that really nice comment. Great save by the car. He's got to make another one though, and he can't because he's he's gonna run out of boost. Like the mirror ties this up once again. Tournament I sounded posher. Yeah, probably sound a bit more like my normal casting voice when I'm casting tournaments. Uh, that's like that's the voice that you uh, you'll probably hear. Excuse me. That's the voice that you'll probably hear if you watch me cast in any like official tournament. Whereas in my stream, it's probably a bit more relaxed. This flick by the car. Lethemir also having boost issues. It's like both players taking turns to run out of boost in defense. 
Uh, do you think we'd ever want to cast RLCS or something professionally? I wouldn't want to. I'm not really interested in doing league play unless league play becomes like uh, an EU thing. Like uh, you know, in theory, if Psyonix got an EU studio and had an EU league play in in the UK, and I could get there uh, without too much hassle, then yeah, sure, why not? I might as well. Uh, I, I already do that for Gfinity Elite Series, so yeah, I would do that. But as far as going all the way to America to cast a league play, which is online matches, and there's no like. Right, serious production quality in studio. Like, I'm not that interested in that. Oh, wow, Lithmir actually does get this one to go in. Huge mind game on the car. Who got a touch on the ball, but still didn't get enough to put the ball out of the net. Well played by Leth. He actually blocked the clear. Um, despite the fact that the car got a touch. Get yeah, the commentary room more focused and professional, of course, but you kept your own style the whole time. It doesn't sound scripted like RLCS. What do you, when you say RLCS sounds scripted, what do you mean? Look at that demo by the car. He is really bringing the heat in game uh, game three here. Casted to 5k amazingly. Raise your voice to go excited when things, good things happen. It made it more exciting to watch. Thank you. Glad glad you think so, man. Um, great one beyond the shocking final. Yeah, the final was definitely the best series of the whole thing, in my opinion. It's fantastic. But yeah, I don't want to... I, I, I prefer doing pre rec stuff. Like, uh, tournaments like that, if I'm going to run tournaments like that in the future, I think it will definitely be pre rec Oh, wow, the car has just bullshoyed Lethemir into a save. As Lethemir is looking for an air dribble bump. That is fantastic work. You know, if somebody's coming in for a slow air dribble bump and you've got more momentum as the goalkeeper, you can absolutely do that. Just hit them into the ball, get them to save it for you. Now he's got a two goal lead in game three. I like that he's staying on the ball there. He's forcing Lethemir into an early shot. Which Lethemir has missed. And Leth off the wall for a tight angle. Double touch. He's got it. Barely on target. The car puts it in for him. What is happening? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, then. <coughs> Sorry, I wasn't prepared for that. Uh, out of nowhere, own goal. Lethemir just barely missed it. I think he missed it. I think he was going to hit the post and then go out. And then in comes the car to finish the job. Fantastic stuff. I do like that touch from Lethemir, by the way. If he, if he waited for that ball to come down, there was always a chance that he would be vulnerable to a ball chase from the car. But that way that he just played it really only made himself vulnerable to a demo. Like Maybe the car could demo him as he's landing from that aerial. Um, but even if that happens, the ball is in a pretty safe location. I don't think the car could get a demo and then score the goal before Lethemir respawns. That's why I like Lethemir's line of play there. 11 boost in a dream. He's got the ball underneath the car. Still looking for the tight game is Lethemir. The car's coming back, but not fast enough. It's going to be the crossbar with the save, though. 5-6. Car still holding on to this lead. He's definitely played the best game he's played all series in this third game. Lethemir's not been too shaky himself. But the car has held up strong and consistent in the face of adversity. It's going to be Lethemir trying to sneak in another long shot. This time it goes nowhere. 45 seconds left. The car trying to double up his lead. That would be a really, really strong position going into the final 30 seconds. But it's actually Leth. He's threatening at the moment. He's not going to be afraid of any aerial battles, is Lethemir. Very, very fast, very consistent, very straight in the air, and he's stepping up the challenges way, way up the field right now. He's going to hope that this rolls back for him, and there it is. But the car comes through for the demo. He's got to hold on for 15 seconds now. He's got a chance to hold on and win this game three, take us further into the series. Lethemir has five boosts for an air dribble. He can't get back into the air for the ball, but the car's let him touch it anyway. I reckon it's going to be left with... The game loss here, though, because the car has done enough to hold on. We are going to go into game four. Well played by the car there in the last minute, especially. Some awkward spots, but he did well. And we are not going to see a sweep today. Even though, wow, the car had nine saves in that game. You know, I said in game one, I think it's all about defense for the car. If he can try his best to prevent Leth from scoring, that is, I think, his win condition. Some of the best uh, performances I've ever seen against Lethemir, in fact. 
one that I remembered in particular was Garrett G, who is definitely not a 1v1 player. He's not known for his 1v1 ability, but he is like very good at 1v1 for someone who's not known for his 1's ability. That's an open net miss for the car, by the way. Absolutely should be scoring those. But what I remember from Garrett G versus Lethemir, it was from a 1v1 tournament that I ran. Um, was it the one that was sponsored by Bad Panda? I don't think it was. I think it was the NA1K Invitational. Something like that in 2016, I think. Um, and Lethemir nearly lost to Garrett G because Garrett was playing so solid in defense. He just dealt with all of Lethemir's offensive ability um, and then worried about scoring after he had completely mopped up all of Lethemir's offense. And it's the same sort of style that I see Squishy using when he plays against Lethemir. He's another player who does quite well against Leth from time to time. And when he plays well, it's because he just doesn't fall for any of Lethemir's tricks. Lethemir likes to fool people into committing loads of boost or jumping into the air when they don't have to, you know, pre-jumping saves and he goes underneath them. He just tries to get people to make bad decisions. And if you can make good decisions defensively against Leth, then you have a chance. That's what the car is doing right now. But Leth switched him over. There's going to be no shadowing on this play. It's very awkward for the car. Hook shot for Leth. And it's just going to go straight in the top corner. That's just beautiful by Lethemir. As soon as he sees the car going back into the corner, he switches it over. And that completely opens up a whole world of options. The hook shot. Very difficult to stop, as we saw right there from the car's perspective. He can take a soft touch and volley it. He can uh, take a soft touch, control the ball and flick it. He can go for a mind game. He can go for a low 50-50. He can cut and field the other way, switch to the car again. There's actually so many options when you put the defender on the wrong foot like that. Massive props to Leth for that first touch. Is he going to do it again? The car has actually turned early this time to stop him doing it. There's a really nice adaptation by both players. The car noticed that when he backed off all the way into the corner, he uh, made himself really vulnerable to Lethemir switching the play setting up a monstrous hook shot. So what does he do to stop that? Turns early, challenges the midfield before left can cross him over. So notice both these guys are making adaptations on the fly, trying to surprise the opponent. There's the early challenge by the car again. He's found the answer to what Lethemir's trying to do. Lethemir still has the ball though in the tie game. But the car is not going to give Leth the space to switch him over, I don't think. See this, he's following him from side to side, so now he is in fact shadowing and he can react to the shot a lot more easily. That doesn't make it an easy save by any means, but at least the car has a chance this time. And as you can see, he is starting to hold on. It's really nice defense by the car. I'm so impressed by both these guys. First that switch by Leth to give himself the only goal that he scored this game. And then the car, realizing what Lethemir did to him and countering it. That's really nicely done by Leth as well. How about that? To <laughs> set up a shot off the wall. He's just pinched it over the top off the car. The car expected that ball to go down the line. The left went up high over the top of the challenge. Really nicely done. The car finally gets his hands on the ball and he's got a chance to score onto left. The left has really read him like a book there though. Forced him into a post pinch save. Two minutes and eight seconds left. It's the lowest scoring game so far. Left was looking to pass the ball to himself off the sidewall. The car gets a bump onto him stop that from happening but Leth is still causing a lot of problems for the car and now he doesn't even need to attack he's already got the one goal lead he's going to try and bait in the challenge and there it is and Lethemir gets the ball over the top of it he just gets to play his own game when he's ahead really nice change up by Leth slow playing the car knows he has to challenge at some point and unfortunately for him Leth got it over his head. Fake challenge, or fake kickoff rather. He's going to secure the boost and the ball for Leth. He's going to force the car out of his comfort zone yet again. The shot this time won't find the back of the net. But still, time is being wasted here. The car hasn't had a real opportunity in a long time. Now he finally gets one, but Lethemir is fast to get back into defense. Prevent that from working as well. The car looking for a demo. He doesn't find it. Leth at the edge of the box into the air for this one. He's going to have to go quickly back down again, though. It's a car. Was there with a the save. Good boost pick up by the car, but Lethemir is getting all these awkward touches just to keep the ball away from attackable locations. One minute left. The car's only scored once in game four. Lethemir looking imperious here. The 
looking very, very solid in the midfield. Another shot finds the back of the net. This is just clinical from Leth. Four goals in a row, I believe. If my memory serves me correctly. And he's just making it look so easy. Do I ever do a gold plat tournament? I did once before, but the issue with uh, doing rank specific tournaments at the moment is that there's no real way to stop Smurfs from coming in and ruining everybody's day. You can't kick people from tournaments. You can't uh, like ban accounts that have like certain amounts, of, like low amounts of ranked games played. Uh, the easiest way to like make tournament mode better for me would be to have a filter that, in order to join a tournament, a player has to have played a certain amount of games on their account. That way, if somebody is going to try and smurf it, it's going to be more difficult for them to get their hands on the account because they can't just get a new account, play ten games, and it's getting silver, and then ruin a bronze silver tournament. You know. That's, that's my, well, at least one of my small solutions. It's not foolproof, but at least it helps. Uh, but yeah, until stuff like that happens, or until I can kick people from tournaments that I'm running, who are obviously smurfing, then I don't think I can really run rank specific tournaments. It's just not going to work. Much like this comeback is not going to work. Lethemir has this one in the bag. Series has gone very, very one-sided at the end here in the last game, but I'm still impressed with some of the cars play today. You know, if he had not conceded that third, uh, the, the, the second goal that he conceded this game. We could have seen a very different game four here if he'd managed to hang on, sneak another couple of goals himself. Then maybe Lethemir's the one who's frustrated and doesn't, and throws in a couple of challenges that don't work. Uh, but as things stand, Leth wins the game with one huge move, turning to challenge in the midfield with a pinch up the wall. And that's all he needed. Right, I'm going to turn Brian back on. Uh, so, yeah. That's just to let you guys know. And I'm going to catch up on all the alerts that I've missed. Because I did miss quite a few of them. Missed an awful lot of them. But big thanks to Lethemir in the car for playing. That was good to see Leth back on stream. One of the best North American Ones players to ever play the game. Um, right, let me get back to these uh, alerts that I missed. You like my haircut? Thanks, King Spectre. Right, where were we here? Um, I think we are at Corny Defib. With a prime sub, welcome. Tombo, 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 seven month prime, welcome back. Add Johnny Boy, get squishy to play one on his stream. On his stream? What do you mean? Get get squishy to play uh, a 1v1 while he's streaming. Is he streaming now? He probably is. Since you've said that. Try his best to prevent Leth from scoring. That is, I think, his win condition. Some of the best uh, performances I've ever seen against Lethemir, in fact. One that I remembered in particular was Garrett G, who is definitely not a 1v1 player. He's not known for his 1v1 ability, but he is like very good at 1v1 for someone who's not known for his 1's ability. That's an open net miss for the car, by the way. Absolutely should be scoring those. But what I remember from Garrett G versus Lethemir, it was from a 1v1 tournament that I ran. Um, was it the one that was sponsored by Bad Panda? I don't think it was. I think it was the NA1K Invitational. Something like that in 2016, I think. Um, and Lethemir nearly lost to Garrett G because Garrett was playing so solid in defense. He just dealt with all of Lethemir's offensive ability um, and then worried about scoring after he had completely mopped up all of Lethemir's offense. And it's the same sort of style that I see Squishy using when he plays against Lethemir. He's another player who does quite well against Leth from time to time. And when he plays well, it's because he just doesn't fall for any of Lethemir's tricks. Lethemir likes to fool people into committing loads of boost or jumping into the air when they don't have to, you know, pre-jumping saves and he goes underneath them. He just tries to get people to make bad decisions. And if you can make good decisions defensively against Leth, then you have a chance. That's what the car is doing right now, but Leth switched him over. There's going to be no shadowing on this plate. It's very awkward for the car. Hook shot for Leth, and it's just going to go straight in the top corner. That's just beautiful by Lethemir. As soon as he sees the car going back into the corner, he switches it over, and that completely opens up a whole world of options. The hook shot, very difficult to stop, as we saw right there from the car's perspective. He can take a soft touch and volley it. He can uh, take a soft touch, control the ball, and flick it. He can go for a mind game. He can go for a low 50-50. He can cut and field the other way, switch to the car again. There's actually so many options when you put the defender on the wrong foot like that. Massive props to Leth for that first touch. Is he going to do it again? The car 
has actually turned early this time to stop him doing it. This is a really nice adaptation by both players. The car noticed that when he backed off all the way into the corner, he uh, made himself really vulnerable to Lethemir switching the play, setting up a monstrous hook shot. So what does he do to stop that? Turns early, challenges the midfield before Leth can cross him over. So notice both these guys are making adaptations on the fly, trying to surprise the opponent. There's the early challenge by the car again. He's found the answer to what Lethemir's trying to do. Lethemir still has the ball though in the tie game. But the car is not going to give Leth the space to switch him over, I don't think. See this? He's following him from side to side, so now he is in fact shadowing. And he can react to the shot a lot more easily. That doesn't make it an easy save by any means, but at least the car has a chance this time. And as you can see, he is starting to hold on. It's a really nice defense by the car. I'm so impressed by both these guys. First that switch by Left to give himself the only goal that he scored this game. And then the car, realizing what Lethemir did to him and countering it. That's really nicely done by Left as well. How about that? <laughs> to set up a shot off the wall. He's just pinched it over the top off the car. The car expected that ball to go down the line. The left went up high over the top of the challenge. Really nicely done. The car finally gets his hands on the ball and he's got a chance to score onto the left. The left has really read him like a book there though. Forced him into a post pinch save. Two minutes and eight seconds left. It's the lowest scoring game so far. Left was looking to pass the ball to himself off the side wall. The car gets a bump onto him stop that from happening but Leth is still causing a lot of problems for the car and now he doesn't even need to attack he's already got the one goal lead he's going to try and bait in the challenge and there it is and Lethemir gets the ball over the top of it he just gets to play his own game when he's ahead really nice change up by Leth slow playing the car knows he has to challenge at some point and unfortunately for him Leth got it over his head. Fake challenge, or fake kickoff rather. He's going to secure the boost and the ball for Leth. He's going to force the car out of his comfort zone yet again. The shot this time won't find the back of the net. But still, time is being wasted here. The car hasn't had a real opportunity in a long time. Now he finally gets one, but Lethemir is fast to get back into defense. Prevent that from working as well. The car looking for a demo. He doesn't find it. Leth at the edge of the box into the air for this one. He's going to have to go quickly back down again, though. It's a car. Was there with a the save. Good boost pickup by the car, but Lethemir is getting all these awkward touches just to keep the ball away from attackable locations. One minute left. The car's only scored once in game four. Lethemir looking imperious here. Looking very, very solid in the midfield. Another shot finds the back of the net. This is just clinical from Leth. Four goals in a row, I believe my memory serves me correctly and he's just making it look so easy do I ever do a gold plat tournament? I did once before but the issue with uh, doing rank specific tournaments at the moment is that there's no real way to stop smurfs from coming in and ruining everybody's day you can't kick people from tournaments you can't uh, like ban accounts that have like certain amounts of, like low amounts of ranked games played uh, the easiest way to like make tournament mode better for me would be to have a filter that in order to join a tournament a player has to have played a certain amount of games on their account that way if somebody is going to try and smurf it it's going to be more difficult for them to get their hands on the account because they can't just get a new account play 10 games and it's getting silver and then ruin a bronze silver tournament you know that's that's my well at least one of my small solutions it's not foolproof but at least it helps uh but yeah until stuff like that happens or until i can kick people from tournaments that i'm running who are obviously smurfing then I don't think I can really run ranked specific tournaments. It's just not going to work. Much like this comeback is not going to work. Lethemir has this one in the bag. Series has gone very, very one-sided at the end here in the last game. But I'm still impressed with some of the cars play today. You know, if he had not conceded that third, uh, the, the, the second goal that he conceded this game, we could have seen a very different game four here if he'd managed to hang on, sneak another couple of goals himself. Then maybe Lethemir is the one who's frustrated and doesn't and throws in a couple of challenges that don't work. Uh, but as things stand, Leth wins the game with one huge move, turning to challenge in the midfield with a pinch up the wall. And that's all he needed.